Hello everyone, this is Radagast today bringing you a Battle for Earth 2 commentary, and, but more importantly, I'm bringing you a piece of advice. Do not sit on your leg for an extended period of time, or else it will go to sleep on you. Which just happened to me, and I'm thoroughly frustrated about that, so now I'm going to try to cast this game with my leg asleep. Having said that, today's replay is going to be between Ionet12, who sent me this replay at my email address which can be found below in the video description and his opponent is going to be Bryce so it's going to be men versus goblins um let's see what's been happening recently uh I really can't think of much oh yeah Yes, shut the server down um only slightly ticked off about that uh it was kind of weird though I was actually on the server when it was supposed to shut down which was uh 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and it didn't shut down exactly when it was supposed to. People told me that it was on like several hours longer than it was supposed to be, so I have no clue what's up with all that, And which was actually kind of a nice thing for me, because my would-have-been last game was the most annoying thing that I've ever experienced in my life. I was dwarves facing a man on Void's Horizon, and that was the most crazy lag that I've experienced in quite a while. I couldn't micro a thing and practically lost the game just because of lag. I mean, he was okay, but very disturbing game. So I was able to go back on and play two more games with uh, one of my viewers, actually. And those turned out quite well, and I'm probably going to cast one of those. So yeah, my final memory of the server is not a bad one, <laughs> which is kind of nice. Uh, let's see, the goblins actually starting off with a little bit of mineshaft play, or tunnels, whatever the heck they have. <laughs> That'd be tunnels. And he's just sitting here with goblin warriors in his tunnels. He should be using that to try to creep or something. Uh, looks like the men are going with a uh, standard two farm to outpost. And just going for a straight up attacking force. He's going for a really fast archery range. He's going to be okay with that because he's got the outpost, so he'll have the income to support that. Goblin's doing a nice job outnumbering the men and getting up some of uh, these cave bats, you know, crabine, crabine, and Isengard. But even still, these soldiers do a pretty decent job. I mean, come on. They've got like minus 50% armor or whatever. Cave bats do something like that. And down number two to one, and they still kill one of the hordes. Balance issue? I think possibly. Uh, yeah, the goblins. Okay, good. They got up another structure. I was gonna say if they're just gonna sit on the one goblin cave the whole game, that could be a problem. Especially since we got this archery range coming up here. Uh, let's see. Uh, one thing I'm gonna be picky for a minute, but the barracks. Um, generally, I have it facing off um, forwards. This one's kind of facing just like. In a generic direction, but I generally have it facing outwards, so you can get your units out of here a teeny little bit faster. Picky of me, but it's just a useful little thing to do. And not too much going on down here. The goblin's finally taking this out, which should have been done a long time ago, because we really, really need this outpost. I think for this outpost, actually, you can run your troops up around here, and stand them over here, and capture the flag. I only take minimal damage from all these troops. I know you can do that on this outpost, because the goblin cape's so far away, which is kind of a map balance issue. But, regardless, um, yeah, the goblin's going and taking this out, grabbing the treasure chest, and hopefully we'll grab that outpost next. And in the meantime, men just doing a good job creeping, taking down all these structures for free money. Whoa, come back. Kill that. And actually got a pretty fair amount of archers out already. He's got two archers and um, one Gondor, Gondor soldier horde. That's actually really hard to say. It's some kind of conspiracy. I can't forget it. <laughs> I'm not going to talk anymore. Or through with talking. Um, yep. Got the cave troll out. Going for more creeping. It wouldn't be bad to see that cave troll go grab a tree if all he's going to do is take out units. I mean, he's okay with just flailing his hands. He's really, really more effective with a tree. Gets a lot more area. Men kind of sneaking around down here. Playing pretty passive, but 
there's a reason why he went for a Boromir. And if you're going for Boromir, then you are totally forgiven for sitting back for a minute. So, really, this is a pretty strong opening by the men here to go. He's going for Boromir, he's going for Ranger, he's going for a lot of high tech stuff really fast. And he actually doesn't have, like, incredible. Actually, he does, okay. I was going to say he doesn't have the farming to support this all, but he's got like five, six farms and outposts. And outposts are wonderful. Which you'll know if you play maps like Helm's Deep, Morning Light, like me. I love Helm's Deep maps so much. And taking out the War Glare, which is a little more uh, economically worth it. And still, the goblin's just going with this goblin warriors and cave trolls. So these are actually archers. Not that I know the difference or anything. <laughs> but these are just going to get ripped to shreds. Yeah, Boromir's doing his horn exactly what he should do. The cave trolls actually might do a decent job because there's no pikes around here. But these archers are doing a nice job microing them to the back, but they should be focusing down the trolls right here. This one's getting kind of low. And maybe be able to use Boromir on this. Wow, those rangers have got range. <laughs> rangers have range. Funny. I get it now. And running backwards with the troll. What the heck? And coming with small warriors. He really should have split these. There we go. This is split. He's pulling some over here, over here. And these ones running kind of nowhere. I was wondering if he was going to go harass farmer or something. Apparently not. And Boromir doing some really nice work right there. And uh, looks like these Goblin Warriors are doing their job nicely. And he's actually taking out the Rangers there. Archers require a little more Gondor soldiers. Yeah, there we go again. The uh, Swordsmen. There we go. Gondor soldiers. Gondor soldiers. Gondor. Forget it. It's just not worth it more goblin warriors coming out and upgrading to level 2 don't really know why he's doing that there are absolutely no cavalry on the field and there aren't going to be any cavalry in the field and he hasn't scouted any cavalry on the field so why would you assume that there's going to be cavalry on the field I have no idea unless he just wants to produce cave trolls faster that might be it yeah, he's really building a really incorrect counter unit. I would like to see him build a spider pit. There we go. Yeah, spider riders are kind of the way to go right now, especially because he didn't see any pikes earlier. If you kind of think your opponent's not going to build pikes, then go ahead and go for spider riders. With this many rangers, wow. Really, really heavy on the archers here. Of course, I do love archers myself. Someday I will be an archer. I actually met, like, the... Oh, I don't know what he's ranked, but he's like 7th best archer in the United States. Well, at his age group, he's not exactly an adult yet, but... Yeah, some kid who's apparently crazy good at archery. Random fact of the day. Radigast the third knows a bunch of random archers. That are not elven archers. Or rangers. Um, he's kind of clogging up his tunnel system right here. I'm 